It's our story. Eleanor Smith, Atlanta, Georgia. I'm really glad you said that and asked about it. I think that walking for people who can walk is a wonderful thing. And for disabled people who can walk, it's also a wonderful thing because it opens your options. You can walk down the airport aisle instead of being drugged down the aisle on the little dolly chair. But I also think that for some people it's not an appropriate thing to do or keep doing. And in my particular case, I had a, a very high level of polio to where my trunk is weak also. So here I was, and they were, you know, can she walk, will she walk? Long leg braces, a big heavy brace to keep my back from going crooked, walking like this, couldn't play, fell over a lot, poor balance, falling over. Um, I was much less mobile in my little wheelchair, I mean, in my walking than I was in my little wheelchair, much less free. And the other thing that happened, my legs became knock-kneed by the time I was six. My first surgery was because they had me up and walking inappropriately. So was my second surgery at age 12. By the time I was 12, the same things that happened to my legs, they had to go again. We're talking several months in a body cast and a lot of pain. So my, my early major surgery was because they tried to have me up and walking. What I wish is that they would have had me exercising by swimming, crawling, things that would not cause me to fall over. I fell over once as a little kid with my long leg braces, sat down on a hot register, burned a floral design into my thighs before my mom could drag me off. I was not appropriate for walking. And I remember then, as an adult, um, not much more than 20 years ago, so we're talking the 80s, I was having some trouble with my back, and I was out in California for a year and a half on an adventure. I went to a doctor. And I hadn't been to a doctor for years. I was in great health, but my back needed some attention. He thought my case was pretty interesting because I have a special kind of spinal fusion that they don't do anymore, and it held up pretty well. So he wanted some other doctors to see me. Deja vu from being seen by a bunch of doctors and interns. I said, no, I was a grown-up with a little bit of personal power sometimes when I can remember that I have it. So here I was. Um, in front of probably 20 doctors. I had clothes on, thank goodness. I wouldn't have done it otherwise. But they wanted, he wanted to show my fusion and show me, and I was perfectly willing to cooperate. I'm in front of these doctors, and one of them says, he was the, I believe he was the head resident, the head surgeon, when did you decide to give up on walking? As if it was a personal failing. And I said, you know, I don't see it that way at all. The day I decided to stop walking was one of the better decisions of my life. It felt really good to be able to, um, in a situation where I had been so disempowered, to be able to look him in the eye and tell him the truth, my truth for me at that time. The day I put my braces in the trash was a good day. I, a lot of times I wish I could walk some. You know, it's great if you can. Um, since, you, since you're going to edit, I'll say this uh, to you, that you were talking about getting a power chair. You can have the best of both worlds. You don't need to give up walking. It's great to be able to walk. But I think it's also be able, great to be able to go about five miles an hour and go about six miles, you know? You can have your cake and eat it too. The It's Our Story Project is a national effort to make disability history public and accessible. Visit us at www.itsourstory.org or on the It's Our Story Project YouTube channel.